Hi everyone, it's me Kavina Labu. Welcome to our channel. No matter how less time you have, keep preparing. Hard work always pays. So today our topic is blood physiology. In blood physiology, we are going to study body fluids, blood, plasma proteins and blood cells in which we will study red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. And in coagulation, we will study the factors of coagulation, intrinsic pathway of coagulation and extrinsic pathway of coagulation, then erythropoiesis and spleen. So first we will start with body fluids. So let's start with body fluids. Our body is made up of both solids and fluids. Two third of our body is made up of water. So a normal human body contains 40 liters of water in which they are divided into two types extracellular fluid and intracellular fluid. Intracellular fluid is made, contains 22 liters and in which extracellular fluids contain 18 liters. In extracellular fluids they are divided into three categories. First one interstitial fluid consists of 12 liters then plasma it consists of 2.75 liter then third one the fluid present in other bones cartilages etc other accessory organs like cerebral fluid etc they are totally 3.25 liters so, so totally ECF consists of 18 liters and ICF consists of 22 liters so Let's think this is the cell. So, the fluid which is present inside the cell, it is called as ICF. In the interstitial space, this fluid is called as, the fluid which is present outside the cell, it is called as ECF. Everything. Then the fluid present in between the spaces of the cell. It is called as interstitial fluid. So that's all about the body fluids. So how to measure the concentration of body fluids? It is measured by the three important ways. First one is osmolality. Second one is osmolality. And third one is tonicity. So what is osmolality? It is used to measure the um, concentration of the body fluids. So how it is expressed? Amount of active, osmolatically active particles which are present in per kg of solvent. So it is expressed in osmoles per kg of solvent. This is how the osmolality is expressed. So osmolarity, how it is expressed? It is expressed in uh, presence of osmolytically ap active substance that is osmoles per liter of the solution. So it is expressed in osmoles per liter. 
So what is tonicity? Tonicity is the measure of effective osmolality. So tonicity it is further divided into three types. First one is isotonic. Second one is hypotonic and third one is hypertonic. So in isotonic, when an, what is isotonic solution? The solution which consists of same concentration of body fluid. It is called as the isotonic solution. So when a normal body cell is placed in an isotonic cell solution, the shape of the cell remains same. So, in hypotonic solution, hypotonic solution which have less osmolality when compared to the concentration of body fluid. So, when a normal cell is kept in the hypotonic solution, the cell is swollen. It occurs due to endosmosis that we have studied in the cell transport. So, what is hypertonic solution which have higher osmolarity when compared to the concentration of body fluids. So, when a cell, normal cell is placed in a hypertonic solution, the size of the cell will be shrinking. It occurs due to exosmosis. Then, let's discuss about the pH of ICF and ECF. So, pH of ECF is 7.4 slightly alkaline and the pH of ICS is neutral. That is ECF usually consists of large amount of sodium, chloride, glucose, fatty acids etc. Then ICF con contains of large amount of magnesium, potassium, phosphates etc. And our next topic is blood. So all as we know, we all know about blood. What is blood? It is the fluid which circulates all over the vascular system of our body. So, the color, what is the blood color? It is red in color. So, how, why it is red in color? Because due to the presence of hemoglobin in it. Then, pH of blood. So, the pH of blood is 7.4 since it is a extracellular fluid then components blood is made up of three components first one blood cells then plasma then serum. So in blood cells, what we know? There are three types, red blood cells, white blood cells and platelets. Then second one, plasma. It is a straw colored fluid. Mainly made up of 98% of water. Then serum. Serum is nothing but plasma without fibrinogen. Serum present after coagulation. So, after coagulation, fibrinogen 
converts to form fibrin. We will discuss detailly in coagulation chapter. So that's it about the blood. Then our third topic is blood proteins. Blood is usually made up of three type of proteins. First one is albumin. Second one is globulin. And third one is fibrinogen. So, the main question asked is the ratio of albumin and globulin. It is 2 is to 1. So, let us discuss about the functions of the blood proteins. First one is albumin. What is the important function of albumin? It maintains collide osmotic it maintains the collide osmotic pressure and it also acts as the carrier protein. Then what is globulin? In globulin the gamma globulin it mainly helps in the defense mechanism it is also known as the immunoglobulin it is of five types in which we will remember in the name of game D IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE and IgD. These are five types of immunoglobulin. So for the function of the fibrinogen, we all know about it. It helps in the coagulation. So that's all about the blood proteins. So now let's discuss about the red blood cells. What are red blood cells? They are also called as erythrocytes. So they are non-nucleated. First one, they are non-nucleated formed elements of the cell of the blood formed elements of the blood then second one what is the shape of RBC it is biconcave so it will be in the shape all it is also known as disc shaped so third one what is the normal value of erythro red blood cells or erythrocytes? Normal value. In male, it is 5 cubic 5 million per cubic millimeter. In case of females, it is 4.5 million per cubic millimeter. In childhood, both male and female child will have the same amount, but in, but in adulthood, the female will be having the less amount of erythrocytes when compared to the male. It is due to the menstruation cycle. Then, fourth one, lifespan. So, the lifespan of erythrocyte is 
120 days and after 120, so 120 days it is break down in spleen. So spleen is also known as the graveyard of red blood cells. This is the most important question. Then we will discuss about the Rolex formation. When a blood is removed from, from the vessel for the test purpose etc. The red blood cells when it is collected it forms the pile like structure. This is the most important property of erythrocyte and it is called as Rolex formation. Next we will discuss about the normal hemoglobin value. First one at birth. At birth the hemoglobin value ranges up to 25 gram per deciliter. Second one at third month it is up to after birth. After birth at third month 20 gram per deciliter. Then at the time of one year, the hemoglobin drops up to 17 gram per deciliter. Then in case of adult male, it is usually 14 to 15 gram per deciliter. Then in case of adult female, it is 12 to 14 gram per deciliter. Then in red blood cells we have already discussed about the Rolex formation. Then now we will discuss about the ESR. ESR means erythrocyte sedimentation rate. So how can you define ESR? It is the time taken for erythrocyte or RBC to settle down in a given tube. It is usually measured in by using two tubes or two methods. First one is Westergaard method and second one is Windrow method. So Westergaard method in this P20 mm is measured and the tube is 300 millimeter long. In Windrow method the tube is 110 millimeter long and the measurements we can take up to 100 mm. Then second one we will discuss about the packed cell volume. Most important repeated question of M MCI. What is packed cell volume? It is the concentration or amount of blood occupied by RBC or red blood cells. In a given amount of blood, how much uh, uh, blood is occupied by RBC is defined as the packed cell volume. 
it is usually expressed in percentage and it is measured by using hematocrit tube so it is popularly known as the hematocrit value the normal hematocrit value in males is 42-45% in females is 38-40% and our next topic is white blood cells it is also called as leuco they are nucleated formed elements or cells whereas RBC are non-nucleated then the normal amount of white blood cells is 4000 to 11000 so when the white, white blood cells count decreases below 4000 then it is called as leukocytopenia if it is increases above 11000 then it is called as leukocytosis then based on the presence of granules they are divided into two types granulocytes and a granulocytes they have specific granules present inside the cells in A granulocytes it also have granules but they are non-specific so in granulocytes it is divided into three types and in A granulocytes it has two types in A granulocytes in granulocytes we have neutrophils eosinophils and basophils and in A granulocytes we have monocyte and lymphocyte then new, in neutrophils how we can differentiate all those things in neutrophils it is multi lobed it have 3 to 4 lobes in eosinophils it is bi lobed and basophils it is also bilobed and in case of monocyte it have a single nucleus and in case of lymphocyte it has very large nucleus which come covers most of the cytoplasm so it is in neutrophils we can identify by it contains both basic and acidic stain it is stained by both basic and acidic neutrophils in case of eosinophils it is stained by acidic stain in case of basophils it is stained by basic stain baso basic stain then in monocyte it also have granules but it is non specific it is the largest cell in WBC then in lymphocyte we know it covers most of the cytoplasm this is how we can identify the cell in microscope then if the neutrophil count decreases then it is called as neutropenia 
If the neutrophil count increases, then it is called as neutrophilia. In love with neutrophils. Then in case of eosinophils, the same. If it is increases, then it is called, it decreases, it is called as eosinopenia. If it is increases, then it is called as eosinophilia. In basophils, the same thing. Basopenia. Then if it is increases, then it is called as basophilia. Then in case of monocyte, it is different, it is not monopenia, it is monocytopenia and if it increases then it is called as monocytosis. Then same in case of lymphocyte, if it is decreases then it is called as lymphocytopenia. Then in case if it is decrease in increases, then it is called as lymphocytosis. And our next topic is immunity. So we all know that white blood cells, the major function of white blood cells is defense mechanism. So defense mechanism is contributed by immunity. Immunity, it is basically divided into two types. Innate immunity and acquired immunity. Innate immunity is nothing but when a child having by the time of birth. So it is also called as natural immunity or non-specific immunity. Acquired immunity is also known as specific immunity. It is, it is acquired, by the name we can know, it is acquired by facing or in response to the pathogens which entered into the body. It is called as acquired. So, acquired is further divided into two types. Humoral and cell mediated. Then these two immunity is taken by lymphocytes. So lymphocytes is further divided into two categories. T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte. In cell mediated it respond to the pathogens by the release of cytokines. Then in case of humoral, it responds by the release of antibodies. This is slow and this is fast. Then T lymphocyte is further divided into 4 and B lymphocyte is further divided into two types. First one is T helper. Then second one is killer or cytotoxic T cells. Then third one is T suppressor. Then in plasma it is further divided into plasma and mammary. And this is also we have mammary T cells. So these are the type. So now we will go to the immunoglobins. In immunoglobins we have five types. We will remember in the name of GAMD. This is very important topic to remember in MCI that is IgG, IgA, IgM, IgE and IgA. 
then IgE it is released in case of allergic then IgA it is released by external secretion external secretion like tears breast milk etc then IgD it is used to find B lymphocyte IgD then these two helps in complement function So, which is the antibody which pass through the placenta from mother to the fetus? It is IgG. So, which is the uh, immunoglobin which acquired after birth? IgA, it is gained from the mother's breast milk. So, at birth or before birth, the immunoglobin which is present is IgG. So after birth, the immunoglobin which gets from the mother is IgA. It is gained through breast milk of the mother. So that's all about the immunity. So now, discuss about the platelets. So they are also non-nucleated formed elements of the blood. They are colorless. So platelets are also known as thrombocyte. Then the normal amount ranges from 1 lakh 50,000 to 4 lakh 50,000. Same in case of platelets, if the amount decreases, it is called as thrombocytopenia. If the amount increases, then it is called as thrombocytosis. Then the main properties. First one, adhesion. Second one, aggregation. And third one, agglutination. In same, in case of WBC, we have forgotten to and the properties, it has also four properties. Diapedesis, second one, amoeboid, moment, and third one, phagocytosis, and fourth one, chemotaxis. So what is adhesion? It is if, imagine this part is injured one, so the platelets will come and it will stick to this surface. So this process is called as adhesion. So what is aggregation? Platelets from different parts acquire to the injured tissue. It is called as aggregation. What is agglutination? So the aggregated platelets will be clumped together to form a tight clot. 
it is called as agglutination. So, we will describe the properties of WBC. What is diapedesis? The process by which WBC squeeze through vessels. Amoeboid movement. The process by which WBC change its shape. Pagocytosis. It is an engulfing mechanism. We have discussed it already. What is chemotaxis? It is the mechanism by which the infected site, the WBC are attracted to the infected site. It is called as chemotaxis. Then we discuss the function of platelets. First one, it helps in clot formation. Second one, it helps in clot breakdown. Third one, it helps in repair of injured vessel. And the fourth one is, it helps in stoppage of bleeding. And fifth one, it somewhat helps in the process of immunity. So that's all about the platelets. So in this video we have discussed all these things. In part 2 video we will discuss the remaining topics. So thank you.